Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Fence! Get a hold of yourself, dude. There, there you go. Uh, today we're going to talk about continuity! <laughs> That's the only way I can keep from getting slapped. Um, today, today we're going to talk about continuity. Uh, Vince had an idea for a topic about continuity. Vince, what is it? What are we, what are we talking about today? Well, the idea is... Should they be allowed, they, the proverbial they, be allowed to make movies in the same continuity where one is live action and the other is animated? So can we open this up a little bit? Can we can can we can we open this up to like to like all kinds of mediums where it's like you know you, you know just to say just to say is it okay to have something in one medium that is then canon in another medium? Yeah, because I can come up with a lot of examples um, of of things that that aren't just movies that take animation, but we'll but but we'll, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. The first things that come to mind if we're going to open it up to, to TV is uh, Star Wars and I don't know and was, everything else was and it? everything ever yeah but yeah so that's the only thing that I can think is that and I I'll admit I haven't watched it so I don't know if it's truly canonical if it really Are we talking about Clone Wars or? yeah yeah if it really affects and is affected by the rest of the universe okay. Here's what's irritating about Clone Wars to me, um, or, or about, not Clone Wars, because I've not watched much Clone Wars. Um, I'm going to mention the other Clone Wars. Um, there was a Cartoon Network uh, show that was, um, they, were, they were shorts, and you put them all together and you get a um, almost movie link thing. Oh, and, yeah! Yeah, and they, that was also called Star Wars The Clone Wars, as far as I'm aware. Um, or maybe it was just The Clone Wars and didn't have Star Wars in the title. I don't remember what they called it, but, um, but, but, but I saw it. And here's what was really weird about it. I liked it a lot. I didn't care for the animation, but I thought that, this, that, that the script was great. And what was, what was weird about it was that I felt like you needed that to bridge the gap between 2 and 3. Um, because it gave all of the background of, um, of General Grievous who just shows up in 3 like we've known him forever. And, it, and, 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 and and when I saw 3, I felt very much like... Well, I saw this after 3. So once I went back and watched the, 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 Clone, War, the Clone Wars cartoon show thing, I was like, 3 almost feels like it knew about that, and like we were supposed to have seen it somehow, you know? And it was, it was, it was really jarring. And so I, I realized, for all intents and purposes, this must be canon, because it, it doesn't contradict anything. It was actually the setup I needed for some of these characters. Not to mention the fact that I liked Anakin in that in a way that I didn't like him in the movies. And, uh, yeah, it was bizarre. I gotta admit, I forgot that existed. Yeah. So, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, this happens with Star Wars a lot, though. Where I mean, they have lots and lots of canon things. They have video games that are considered canon. They have books that are considered canon. And, um, I, I think that there are, you know, among fans, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some disputes that happen of, of, of what, what should be canon and what should not be, since a lot of it, since it's all written by different people, have to contradict each other, you know, but... You know, in my head, that really getting different mediums, like different methods of uh, from an animated versus uh, versus live action, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. But when you get into the idea that you have to have seen a TV series for a movie to make sense when it started as a movie, that's kind of problematic in my head. And it's not fair to, yeah. to, 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 the, to the viewers because you are going to have a lot of people who didn't even know about the, uh, about that cartoon show, and um, you're asking them to. Um, potentially, you know, spend money you shouldn't be asking them to spend, you know? Um, so they get to the movie theater and they say, well, what's this about? I don't know what they're talking about. I haven't seen uh, whatever random TV show or book that they expected me to read. It's different, of course, when you have a series that, like, where, where it started as a TV show and then it becomes movies, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like exactly. you know, we, we, don't, we don't complain about that for something like, say, Star Trek, you know, or, 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 or like, you know, they're going to make a 24 movie, things like that, where it's like, where it's like you know, you watch the show on TV and then you want to see the big screen version of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Firefly to Serenity, how glad are we that we had that, you know? Things like that, so. You see, I, that's not, there's nothing wrong with making a movie from a TV show. I mean, at some point you're just expanding your universe into different mediums, and, I, and that's been going on forever. We had that with Sissy's Batman, you know. We had a season yeah. of Sissy's Batman, and then they had a movie, you know. So I have a question for you. Yes, sir. How do you get rid of a bomb? Well, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> Correct answer. Oh, all right, all right. You know, you know, you know. One of my favorite lines in that movie nobody ever quotes. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's when they're, they're standing, um, they're standing on the buoy. And the uh, and and um, the the the, uh, the missile is coming at them, and um, they're they're uh, they're they're stuck to the buoy because of the metallic objects in their utility belts, and um, 
and uh, he's he's got a he's got an object in his belt that will deflect the the missile, and he's and he's playing with it. It's a polarity device, and he's playing with it. And uh, fi finally, and it's not working. And finally, he says, "Confound it! The batteries are dead." And like that's what's gonna kill them because the batteries don't. Anyway, that's. Besides the bomb thing, that's my favorite line in that movie. Sometimes I'll just... And, and I have had cause in my life to say that at various... Confound it! The batteries are dead! The next anyway. time I have something with a dead battery, I'm going to think of that. You see, you got to say it, isn't that great? <laughs> confound <laughs> it! <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, confound it might change into a different phrase. That has <laughs> nothing to do with what we're talking about. This is true. Um, okay, so, so, so car cartoons to, 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 to movies. Um, the thing I... The, the, the problem I have with this sometimes is you will get things that will get made because something gets popular where, where you'll have books and you'll have a cartoon show. It's that, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like if, if uh, for instance, you have something like, you know, the Pirates of the, Car of the Caribbean movies and then they make an animated series, you know, you, or, or you have, um, or you have The Mask and then they made an animated series, uh, uh, Men in Black and then they made an animated series, like, like, uh, Ghostbusters and then they made an animated series, like, like, should those things all be canon together? Do they have to be? They usually aren't, like, usually they have to change something to make the premise of it work as, a, as, as an episodic TV show. I think at some point it's going to get down to uh, picking and choosing what you actually make canonical. Because and I'm okay with that. I mean, I've got no problem yeah. with that. In order to really treat everything as canon, you're going to have some things that contradict each other. And, in fact, even existing as a comic book, you're going to have things that contradict each other. That's, is, what, that's what Eric Burnham was saying with Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when, I, when, I, when I talked to him on Late Night, you know, when, when, when he was saying, when I, when I asked him, so uh, how do you decide what's canon with all the different Ghostbusters things? He says, well, with the video game, some of it is and some of it's not. So if I put it in there, it's canon. If I didn't, it's not yet. What but, a, you know, it could be, but it's not yet. What, a, what an interesting review. I almost said review. Interview. Oh, I, I listened to that thing twice. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was really cool. But, Ghostbusters. But no, I'm just saying, because that directly relates to what we're talking about. Exactly. Where, where, where it's like, he, he found some things that were absolutely of merit that I'm glad he used because he got mileage out of them. Uh, a lot of comedic mileage out of them. Uh, but then there are other things, like like I completely understand why why from the video game he wouldn't want to use, you know, the, the fact that, he, that in that Winston had a degree because it doesn't work with the story that he's trying to tell. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that... Uh I think you should be allowed to, especially if you have a film and you want to create things that attach to it, adding on to the universe. I think if you're going, I think you should be allowed to, say you have a live action film, and say uh, a year down the road you want to create something else, but it would be cheaper to make an animated feature. I say you should be allowed to make an animated feature that's still canonical. I think that should be far. You know, I think that should be something that people should be allowed to do. It should. I think that they should take very good care of what they make, and that it feels like it could even theoretically be the same universe, right? Because um, we 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 had we had this problem in the mid '90s with Xena and Hercules of all things. Um, there was a there was a cartoon um, direct -to video movie that came out that was so kiddish, and I mean, it, it like the the whole the whole plot was for whatever reason, like, all the gods got turned into, like, farm animals. It was bizarre. And there was talk about whether or not that thing was supposed to be canon, and I'm like, yeah, no, it shouldn't be. It was a, it was a, it was a silly kids movie made out, made out of, a, you know, an adult show. And things like that, you know, so... Well, I suppose maybe I'll say it this way. But because they had the voices from the show, it was sticky, you know? Things should be allowed to be canon, but not necessarily required to be canon. I mean, if you have something that is just universally considered awful, <clears throat> the Clone Wars, not the Clone Wars. I've met the Clone Saga. Okay, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who really like that show. I, I just yeah. haven't watched much of it, so I can't speak to it. So if you have something that's universally considered to be awful, I mean, it's okay to ignore certain things. You're going to get written. trouble even for that. You realize that. Ah, that's fair. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> but uh, if you have ear... But that, will, but that will always be considered canon. I mean, well, I, mean, I mean, the man who made the originals made that. No matter how bad it is, you're never going to get around the fact that it's supposed to be canon. And, no, and even no matter what it contradicts. I mean, the, the thing about... The problem is the word, right? The, 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 the word canon. The, the, the assumption with the word canon is that we all agree that these things fit in a continuity. As soon as there is disagreement, um, you can't personally say this fits into canon and this does not. It doesn't make sense to have a personal opinion about canon, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a word that doesn't, you know what I mean? Uh, you, know, you can say, you know, I would prefer this to be, I like this in the universe and I don't like this in the universe. But the, 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 the word canon means certain things. So if George Lucas... Being the man who invented it, canonicizes everything. Doesn't matter how much it contradicts; it's all canon. I mean, you can't argue with that. It, it doesn't matter. 
Um, likewise, um, the the the, uh, the the people who um, you know Paramount and the people who make Star Trek have always said that uh, anything live action on screen is 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 uh, is canon. And as far as I know, generally speaking, the animated series is not considered canon. Um, it's been disputed in some places, but um, but for the most part, it's not considered canon. Neither are, are, are the books and things like that. Um, if the people making it say these things are not canon then, you know, the fan base can't go, oh, no, they are. You know what I mean? Because it's not for us to decide, really. It's the people making it. Yeah. That's what I think. But I mean, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to really say that uh, one thing should or should not be canon. Uh, sometimes I think things get a little bit too convoluted because of things that they decide are canonical. <laughs> sometimes I wonder if it matters that much, you know? It's like, it's like I, I can... I, I'm not enjoying the, again the, say say the Ghostbusters comics. You know, I'm not enjoying them any more or less because maybe certain people wouldn't consider them to be in the same universe as the movies. It doesn't really matter to me. You know, it's not really that important. Likewise, um, I, I I haven't loved a lot of Trek novels, um, but the ones that I have, um, I, I've, I've loved them despite the fact that they're not um, officially considered canonical. And then you get things where you have series that are canonical within themselves, where the, where they where they take. Um, I, like like uh, like you know uh, uh, Peter, uh, Peter David's uh, a, a big Star Trek series. Um, uh, you, you know um, I forget with the Excalibur. I was forgetting the name. New Frontier. Um, you know they, he has tons and tons of books. All of that is, is 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 its own canon, taking all of Star Trek that came before it. So in in that universe, all of Star Trek that came before it is canon, and then his books are canon, and that's its own canon. You know what I'm saying? So I mean like. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to enjoy that any more or less just because it's not in what I consider to be Star Trek canon. It's, it's, if it's good, it's good. Yeah, I suppose maybe I just get tired of the idea that uh, things have to reinvent the wheel every time it gets produced in another... Like, oh, this is three years down the road, yeah, we're pretty far removed from the original Spider-Man, so we're going to completely re re reinvent the wheel and make Spider-Man as if he's never existed before. Uh, why do we have to reinvent every time? What if there's this uh, prevailing continuity, and uh, why why can't we just connect it to it? You know, like uh, the MTV series was connected on to Spider-Man. That's true. That's true. And it was weird because it cannot cite movies that weren't even connected. So that was that, they said that, that was a really interesting thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Vince, uh, I don't think that's the best example. I'm kind of glad Spider-Man's starting over myself. No, I'm not saying that you can't start over. I'm saying that... I uh, think there are, there, are, there are points where you ought to. I'm glad Spider-Man 4 didn't happen. I mean, like... Well, me too. And I'm not saying that uh, everything, <laughs> everything should be attached to the one continuity. I just think when you have something that's good and that you don't necessarily have to cap it and you don't necessarily have to completely change everything, I think that certain things should be allowed to exist exist, you know, at the same time. There should be a symbiotic relationship, no pun intended, considering Spider-Man, but <laughs> there should be, uh, you know, you should be allowed to create things that exist in animation that also exist in live action. There should be a continuity that should be allowed to exist in those two mediums. Uh, and it doesn't happen all that often. Yeah, you know, I mean... You're absolutely right. And doesn't part of that go into the talks that we've had about um, how, how America doesn't take animation all that seriously? You know, I suppose maybe... What I'm kind of getting at is that uh, I would like to see some feature films, live action, here we go, that film is going to get a sequel that's animated straight to video that's trying to be good. I mean, do we wow. have... But, but, but it's just like that's a huge risk, you know? Yeah. Um, and, 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 and then it's one of those things where I, I, I absolutely agree with you, but then all, all, contrary to that is, couldn't it get super complicated? You know what I mean? Where, where like, you know, you know, where you make something that then goes that, that, that is uh, a big budget movie and then they make a sequel that's direct to video and a lot of those things generally are considered to be canon whatever that means sometimes with movies but but you know um, where, where, where they make a thing to video and then what if they decide to make another one do they have to keep that goes to the theater do they have to keep in mind that video that maybe nobody saw do, you see what I'm saying I mean it can get sticky yeah and I'm not saying that these things should be required I'm just saying that some things uh, Instead of getting another big budget crappy movie, why can't we get a decent, you know, animated movie? <laughs> why don't we have more miniseries these days? Yeah. You know, um, there are a lot of cool things you can do with TV miniseries that uh, don't 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 happen as much uh, these days. And and and, and uh, a lot of people have said that with um, well, with a number of things. But like, but like, I guess we talked about this last video. But like, but like, like with Harry Potter, where people were like, you know, you you could have done those books a lot more justice had you had. Each book not had to have been two hours, you know. If you could have made each one a miniseries, make it six hours long, and 
Um, you know, they, they, they more or less did that with Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and then put it in the theater. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Lord of the Rings. That's commitment. <laughs> that is a commitment every time. Yeah, that's the way I felt like it when I was watching that movie. I'm like, alright, we're gonna make it. Here we go. I also think that different mediums are a cool way to do spin-offs. It's a good idea. You know, we're seeing that. You know, we didn't even bring up Buffing Angel, um, which we probably should have should have talked about a little bit, um, because uh, Whedon has canonicized most of the comics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, they would ha they'd have to at least canonicize <laughs> season eight. Well, yeah, yeah. And season nine is happening now. I mean, like they consider those things to actually be Buffy and Angel canon. That's very interesting, isn't it? You know, well, what about people who don't who, who don't even read comics? You know, like 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 they're 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 never going to know where those characters went. Maybe they don't care. You know, maybe for for some of those people, it ended with a TV show. You know, I think that's fair. I mean, if all you really care about is a live-action movie, just go see the live-action movie. Maybe if they make a sequel or a TV series in between that uh, is canonical, I mean, maybe you just don't approach the stuff that's in there. You just make a movie that's separate. Maybe not every series that reaches theater needs... And I'm just kind of spitballing here, I don't know. But uh, maybe... <laughs> we, we gotta do the Mario thing. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe... Uh, maybe Every episode or everything that reaches theaters doesn't necessarily need to be 100% connected. You can create interesting standalone movies that the only difference is, is that your character's characterization is the thing that comes over from the next movie. Maybe we don't need to have Joker in the next Batman movie. Maybe that's not necessary. Maybe he's in Arkham Asylum, you know? He can be there, <laughs> chilling. We don't necessarily need to say, oh, Joker's out and we're doing stuff because Joker exists in this universe now. It is possible for Joker to get thrown in Arkham and he didn't do it on purpose. It could, it could happen. <laughs> you know, Batman, they have made Batman stories that don't have the Joker in them. I think that's true. Wasn't that who Liam Neeson was playing in Begins? Or was that... Oh my god. <laughs> the conspiracy is complete. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, we, no. Joker is not the Lazarus Pit guy. I forgot. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I also want to throw this out there. I don't know if I'm ever going to read a prequel comic ever again. And the reason is not because they're all terrible. It's because I read one I loved, and then it wasn't canon, and it would have made the movie better had it been canon. And that's and that's the one for Star Trek. The, yeah, the, 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 pre the prequel comic for Star Trek was so cool. And they and the movie contradicted things in it that made it clear that even if I wanted to think of it as it set up that movie, it, 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 it doesn't work. Um, it gave Nero and Spock this extremely interesting background. You should read it. It gave Nero and Spock this really interesting background. And then in the movie, um, they, they, they completely blew all that out and made it way less interesting. It was really un unfortunate because like that, that comic sets up the movie directly as a spin-off of TNG, which in a lot of ways is what it ought to have been, you know? Um, especially as, especially if it's gonna if it's gonna totally blow over TNG and make it where that never happened. Wouldn't it be cool for those of us who love Next Generation if like that that's where it came out of? Especially because the whole premise of that movie, um, with Spot going back in time was that Spock was supposed to... I mean, like, Nero was angry with Spock for not, um, uh, for, for not saving Romulus. When you're not being a Trek guy, you want to know why? Because he was on Romulus. You know why he was on Romulus? Because that was unification. Uh, season 5 TNG um, was... Uh, uh, there was a two-parter about Spock living um, underground um, in Romulus trying to reunify the, 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 the Vulcan and the, and the Romulan empires. You know, that Romulan's an offshoot of, 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 of Vulcans. And um, they, and, and, and he, he, was, he, was, um, he was working to, uh, to create a peace between the two peoples. And the fact that they decided to blow up Romulus in the new Star Trek movie meant that they were going directly back to unification. And wouldn't it have been neat if we had some kind of TNG cameo in that movie? You know what I mean? To, 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 kind, of, to, kind, of, to kind of spin it off. Well, that's what they did with the comic book. Uh, they they made they they had Jordy be the person who built his ship, and stuff like that, you know. So anyway, um, it's just it's it's too bad they didn't go there in the movie, and then the movie contradicts it, and so it's irritating. So um, that is pretty cool. So yeah, when you're talking about things like that, it's too bad that some of them aren't canon that ought to be. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I also think that that would have helped uh, audiences who weren't real familiar with Star Trek understand what the heck Spock had to do with anything. Um, because it's like, well, what does Spock have to do with Romulus? Well, you kind of need unification to even know what the heck he's doing there in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, there were certain things about that movie that I didn't get, but I just assumed I wasn't a Trekkie, so... 
But that's the point, is that, is that they were trying to make a movie that you didn't have to be a Star Trek fan to know, but then they, they, they made the, all the Spock stuff born right out of an episode. And a lot of people wouldn't even know that. Well, that's not fair. No, that's not fair. But to some extent, when you're, when you're walking into something like that, you have to know it's going to happen. You have to know that if you start reading Buffy comics, but you've never watched Buffy the TV series, you're missing out on quite a lot. Yeah, the difference is, well, this is supposed to happen eventually, but the, the difference is Buffy hasn't rebooted yet. Um, is, is Star Trek, they were trying to reboot, you know, you know? And, and they were doing the rebooting out of old continuity thing just to make us happy. But, like, if they're also, you know, I just don't think they could have had their cake and eat it too that well, you know what I mean? Like, like it's disappointing for even the new fans, no, kind of, so cool. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, comic book series. Further, further Adventures of Old Spock. Of Old Spock, yeah. Well, actually, I think uh, maybe they did a mini. They did a mini about um, about Nero, and I think they might have done one about Spock also. I, I, I forget, but yeah. Although I got to tell you, um, that may be kind of happening. I don't know exactly what's going on with this, but um, the, the okay, the current. I got to say this. The, you might want to read this part. The current ongoing Star Trek series is uh, they, they've been adapting uh, the old. Uh, original series episodes um, as two-part comic book stories, and uh, in the new continuity. So it's like we, we we take we take the new continuity and we do the the original series episodes, and they've been okay. But they're about to do uh, coming up starting the next issue. They're about to do I think a three-issue arc that's going to be a brand new story that's just that's about um, the, the the Vulcans picking up the pieces after Vulcan exploded. So I imagine we're going to get to see some old Spock in that. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, anyway. See? I'm full of good ideas. Throwing that out there. They already started doing it. Well, we're well over time. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Thanks a lot for watching Geeks Not Nerds. Sorry to run off about Star Trek. I just... I don't care. It's important. Um, any, any, <laughs> anyway, I, just, I know you're not a big Trek and you hate when I do that, but it seemed, it seemed important. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Man! <laughs> Well, uh, if you have um, if you have anything you'd like us to talk about in a future episode, be sure to leave that in the comments below and tell us what you think about um, what sorts of things ought to be considered canon between different kinds of mediums. Uh, put those things in the comments. Thanks as always for watching. We sure appreciate it. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book stores.